Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth. And we're our, when our, we are in our next destination, which was meant to be Salzburg, but I'll be honest with you, we got very homesick and we decided to head back home a bit earlier towards London. So we've driven all the way to Munich this evening, this evening, well, all day, and we got there this evening. And uh, we're just going to keep going. So I'll admit here that um, you are getting a puzzle today from a tired sleuth who has deliberately picked a puzzle that is, well, I'm going to say it is, we don't, I don't know if it is, but I'm hoping it's going to be relatively easy given I'm not going to be as sharp as I normally am, given it will be a six by six Sudoku puzzle for today rather than the usual nine by nine. Um, just before I take you through today's puzzle, just something that just struck me as very odd today. And I wouldn't bring it up if, if it wasn't for the phone call that we ended up having only like 10 minutes ago. Um, so we've driven all day and we've got to our destination hotel, which I will name as one of the Hilton hotels. And we were very disappointed by the hygiene of the place, where essentially every room that we were shown had black mold all over the bathroom. So we ended up agreeing with the Hilton that we got to that we will try a different Hilton. We went there, unfortunately found the same problem. And out of sheer frustration of driving several hours, getting and trying two different Hiltons, seeing both of them in such a condition, she left a review on Google Maps, which basically describes the state of the bathrooms with photos as evidence. Now, the management of the hotel, rather than actually try and work with us to try and find a suitably clean room, I don't think it's too ambitious to be looking for something that doesn't have mold in it, instead gave her a call at 10 p.m. to basically tell her off for leaving a bad Google review. So I certainly wasn't planning on bringing it up, but if that's the way people are reacting, I think it almost deserves to be named and shamed. And, you know, I wonder if, you know, I'd love to hear your comments about your experiences at various hotel chains. We certainly chose this one because of the brand name. You kind of assume that it will be an excellent experience. And perhaps we were a little bit mistaken with that. Um, now, that whole long preamble is just an excuse for if you see me doing a little bit poorer than normal. That's the excuse. So keep that in mind as we look at today's six by six puzzle that really should be done in like minutes. But if it takes half an hour, you know why. Right. Enough of preamble. Let's take a look at today's puzzle. So 36 hours to thermometer by Dr. Sudoku. And we have extremely simple rules, given the plethora of rule sets that we've had to do over the last couple of days. You know, I literally had to change the font size on the screen to fit in some of the previous rule sets in the last handful of days. And now we have refreshingly just two. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Well, normal six by six Sudoku rules applies. So that means the digits one to six in every row, every column. And in this case, every two by three box. So just bear in mind that distinction. Lastly, we have digits along the thermometer must increase from the bulb end. And we have three thermometers here one huge diagonal that you can see, and then obviously two others um, across it. And I imagine we're going to get onto a bit of coloring to be able to solve this. So relatively straightforward. Dr. Sudoku saw that it's fit that we can solve this with zero digits in the grid. Um, some of the comments I've seen on Logic Masters Germany give me hope that we should be able to do it in around 20 minutes or so. And if you want to play along, link will be in the description down below as usual. Please, if you do, just leave a comment on how you got on. Hopefully, you've, you're going to find this relatively easy, as shall I, and I, as I get started now. So let's restart the clock and see how we all get on. Right, immediately, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six digits in six seconds. Um, we're off to a brilliant start. Now, clearly, the next step for this, uh, you know, after this amazing start is these two diagonal thermometers. 
I just need to sort of think through these a little bit. What I'm going to do is probably pencil mark the options for a second. So, um, so this is not six, which is helpful. And actually, neither is this end. So the largest this can be is five, four. This can't be a three. The largest this can be is two. So this is from one, two. This is from presumably two, three, four. It can't get to five. And this is from, no, this is not two. Just watch out for that. And this is from three, four, not three, four, five. Yeah. Surprisingly limited. Yeah. So can't get to three or four. It's definitely not five. That's obvious. Well, it's not one here, and two is already taken, so three or four. Again, five not available, then it can't be six. And then this has to be higher, so it's four or five, and it can't be six. So this is surprisingly correct. And it looks like we're repeating here. Same logic. It's not one. It's not the first digit on the bulb. And it's not two. It's three, four. It's not five again. And down here, we've got four, five, and it's not six. Interesting. I'm sure the symmetry here is very deliberate. So the first question that comes to me is, do we know if these are different? Can they actually be the same digits, for example, is really the question I'm asking. So, and I'm going to just quickly prove or disprove that this is possible. So let's try an example. If this is, if they're both ones, because it's one or two, this will be a one. We've eliminated these three options because of the ones in the, and that's a one. And then that breaks. Brilliant. Now, I think, well, I'm hoping, to try both as twos, I'm going to end up with a similar challenge, maybe? Yes. I don't know if that was a bit quick, but, you know, if they're both twos, these twos are forcing the two here. These two twos are forcing the two here. These two twos are forcing the two in here, which breaks the puzzle. Interesting. Now, the reason I say interesting is I'm going to... Yeah, I, I will color these. I did say we're probably going to do a bit of coloring. And here we are doing a bit of coloring. But let me just um, explain where my mind is going. I'm thinking is the same problem here if they're both threes and both fours. Again, are they, do they have to be different? And I'm starting to think Dr. Sudoku has constructed this very deliberately to force, pardon me, to force us. Yeah, I mean, I don't even need to look at this. So if these both are three, three goes here in this box and breaks immediately. So they're not both three. Both fours. Let's try that. Yeah. Breaks immediately. They're not both fours. Um, I'm going to continue my usual rainbow of colors. I'm sure you picked up on the fact that I always go purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. And I'm going to say almost certainly the same issue applies here. There's no way it's just going to suddenly, yeah, so the fours immediately break up here. The fives immediately break in here. So they are different. Excellent. They are different, but they are actually yellow and orange. So this is yellow, orange, no, yellow, orange, yellow, orange. Now, I think the trick now is to figure out which is which. So 
they are both different. How do we have to think about this? So I feel like fours, something is special about fours. The reason I say that is we've already essentially pencil marked the fours as a corner pencil mark in here, haven't we? Yeah, because if they're both different, you couldn't do three five because you'd end up with double four in here. So one is three, one is a four. And therefore, whichever one is the four is going to be joined with a five. And then the other one would be a four. So three, four, four, five is the way this resolves. Now, the fact that we pencil mark the fours in here, in both of them, is the bit that I think we need to be using somehow. You see, like, you know, the very obvious thing to try and do is essentially to decide almost at random, essentially bifurcate the puzzle and just pick one at random to be the one and the other one, the two, and see if that works and you'll make some progress. What I'm trying to do is to see if I can logically deduce the trick that Dr. Sudoku has placed in this puzzle. And that's why I'm paying attention to the fours, because we've got clearly the fours cornered in here cornered in there and you can immediately see for example the four has to be in here in this column has to be in there so three four this is not one or two so it's joint with so this is a four with a five or six one of these is another one two so essentially we've got no fours we've got six five joint with one of the one and two whichever one this one isn't i know the five is in there you go can't be excuse me that's an example of what i mean by tired five has to be in here it's not in there that's not a five there's a much much simpler resolution to what i was trying to do five four not not five goodness me that's a one two that's not one two five has to be down here there's no six we've already decided this is the four that's the five that's the four that's the six that's a one two pair we need a one two with a three figure that out in a bit yeah, digits real digits not like the first you know not 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 that i'm sort of kind of telling them off but you know the, those sort of gifts at the beginning um you know look horse in its mouth is that kind of a gift in its mouth maybe rambling I may have to stop talking for a second whilst I try and figure out what's next. Yep, again, the five comes to the rescue. This is not a five. This is a one. Pardon me. This is a one. This is a five. We need to base two and six in here. Don't know what this is just yet. Now five is in here. We know three is in here. That's even that's a lot more interesting. One, two... Three is not here, therefore this is a four, three, a one, two pair, that's the two, that's the one, that's the two, that's the one. I immediately placed that, remember, because they have to be different. We've proven that already. Six, two. We need to place one and six. We need to place three and five. We need to place two and one. Oh, I'm so glad this is actually as simple as I thought it would be. Or hoped it would be phenomenal 10 minutes i mean yeah it is it is a straightforward puzzle i think once you so clearly this is sort of a gift i think anyone should be able to get that once you determine that these are different and the fact that this is not a five and this is a five 
I mean, it all collapses very quickly once you spot that five. Don't know why it took me so long to sort of notice it. I was just off clearly on a completely different tangent. But um, it's a fantastic puzzle, Dr. Sudoku. Um, lovely six by six, an excellent finish to a long day. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And looking forward to the next video from hopefully a more pleasant location. Thank you for now. Bye.